take two. Good morning and happy Valentine's Day. My name is Pasha Baker. I'm the director and CEO of the Goldsboro Westside Community Historical Association Incorporated here with the executive director of the Orlando Museum of Art, Mr. Aaron DeGraff. Um, and we are here to feature the Jean-Michel Basquiat collection. And he is a prominent African-American, Haitian, Puerto Rican artist, from Brooklyn, who has been brought to the main stage by um, none other than a hip hop icon himself, Mr. Jay-Z, and his cultural influence has dominated just all throughout the world. Um, Aaron, why do you feel it was important to bring this collection to Orlando now? Well, it's Black History Month, and this is the 40th anniversary of these paintings being made by the hottest artists on the planet. I mean, you, when you sell paintings for $110 million and $100 million and $93 million, all painted in the same year as the paintings that you're going to see, um, I think it's important for our community. Definitely, and you definitely broke records here. Just like with the diversity of people, last night we all watched the Super Bowl and there was a hip hop concert at the Super Bowl featuring Dr. Dre and Jay-Z, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Eminem, others, Mary, Miss Mary J. Blige. But that concert dominated on one of the largest stages in the world. That's right. Arguably one of the most watched TV um, entertainment primetime specials that will go on for the year. And you brought an African-American collection during Black History Month to a very diverse Orlando community, but it's also the 10 year anniversary of Trayvon Martin, where we're at as well. What do you think Basquiat would say about things that happened today, if he was still alive? Well, the night Basquiat died, he punched out a window in the bathroom and wrote in his own blood, broken hearted. I still think he'd be broken hearted today. Mm. Mm. And so one of the things that art teaches us, and art and history teach us, um, is that history oftentimes repeats itself. Those times in the early 80s, we saw crack and cocaine and heroin take over. Today we see it's an addiction to prescription pills and opioids and, and different types of drugs. So we kind of see we're not heeding those histories, those failed um, warnings that history teaches us. So in Basquiat, definitely a very cultural mainstay here, um, not only in this country, but all across the world. And he would have been 60 years old today, yeah, right? that's right. 60 years old. So what do you think if he wouldn't have passed so young at 27? Yeah. If he wouldn't have passed so young, what do you think his influence would be today? Like Jay-Z. I believe so as well. Yep. I believe he would have dominated. He would have dominated. Yeah. And it produced so many more collections. So we're going to go with Aaron and walk and talk and see the collection. So this is interesting. This is a Basquiat self-portrait, and we see this same figure holding up a, a, a spear uh, three more times. Because this is how he saw himself. He got hit by a car, so he's always got things. These little symbols here, that's hobo code. For hom homeless people will write with chalk on door frames and curbs saying, and actually that's a symbol for jail. Mm. Because you know what you're going to take from these, ex this, these paintings? It's about pain. It's about... That's the whole title of the exhibition, Heroes and Monsters. Yeah. The hero is Basquiat with a crown. That's his autobiographical signature. And the monster is life. Home mm. Homelessness, racism, prostitution, drugs. Remember, this is the early 80s. AIDS. That's right. AIDS, you know? it was an epidemic. That's right. Well, I think Basquiat had it because of the way he was described his last days. He told people he had it. But in the Haitian community, it was... It was considered unbelievably stigmatic. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what, the world was well, back in those times. It was just, yeah. you know. So you got him. This uh, spear is a tribute to African kings. It's a spear. It's a it's a tribute to black culture with a crown. Mm, a warrior. A warrior, right? 
Remember, uh, Boscat did several works of art attributed to bl the black athletes, including mostly boxers. They always mm. got their arms up because he said a black fighter would get hit and knocked down, but they had to get up. That's right. And I think that's how he felt. And also... Seems like a metaphor for life. Metaphor for life. And also think about the concept in, in black culture. I'm, who am I to tell you about Duke Ellington, Count Basie? The home run king was who? Hank That's right. Aaron. That's right. Basquiat had a football helmet that he painted up and wrote Aaron on it because Hank Aaron, these are these are heroes of black folks. And in a minute, I'm going to show you something. They where, broke barriers. That's right. Where they, where he shows Abraham Lincoln sitting on his shoulder. Mm. But um, this is simple. And remember. And his birthday was the other day. That's right. He grew out dreads because he wanted to wear a crown every day. Mm. So it's simple. Yes. But powerful. Actually, we go down a couple more, and um, every one of these paintings is a self-portrait. may not be his face, even though here again you'll see him, just like there. And we didn't know what this was. Somebody described this as a helicopter, but this is a bear. These are the claws. And underneath here is the words emergency, emergency. Boscat said he, he marked things out because just like rapping, remember, scratching and mixing was... That's all right. brand new, and late the 70s, 80s, early, early 80s. Yeah. With the hip hop culture. Right. So it says, blinking, blinking, pump the brakes, pump the brakes, a stop sign with an X across it, and then a bunch of dead little creatures over here. Because Boss got, got hit by a car when he was seven years old. He was in the street uh, playing, mm. and he got hit by a car. He had a ruptured spleen, and uh, he, his mother gave him a copy of Gray's Anatomy, that historic anatomical book. Plus, mm -hmm. he studied Leonardo da Vinci, and he actually references da Vinci very specifically in the last painting he ever made and I can get you that. It's surreal and unbelievable. Such a creative and usually creatives are often the darkest people. People that make you laugh, comedians, yeah. are often very dark people. Artists, That's right. often very dark people. Um, Mozart, um, Basquiat, yeah. Picasso, and everything that they, you see that they've written or autobiographies. Not very happy people. That's right. Yeah, very dark. Actually, we'll, uh, we'll go over here. Oh. Actually, this one's good. So this painting is, um, it, used to be, it used to be called He Didn't because the, the people that would appraise these things just found words and called them that. But in fact, this is a self-portrait. Mm. Now it's gonna, hard, it's gonna be hard to, it's not gonna be hard to break this down. Remember I said he had a copy of Gray's Anatomy. So he did a lot of skeleton people, a lot of skulls. And here you see his red heart. And these emanations means it's moving. We have a, a resume that Boscat wrote himself where he said his pro what he wanted to do first in life was be a fireman. Second, he would be a cartoonist. Well, this is a total cartoon kind of thing. It, it, it's simple. There's lungs, bones, but you have this figure with their hands over their head mm. and they have this crown of thorns mm. or this crown like an angel. But, wh but what is that? He's blindfolded, but he's tried to put a protective dome over himself and my interpretation of this is it's a boxer. Yeah. It's a self-portrait because he did a series of boxers, like the, the, the arms up. But what this is about is about Basquiat's vulnerability. I mean, he's totally exposed. His heart's exposed, yet he's blind, he's blind in life. He always said, I'm not primitive, I'm just naive. And down here you see the copyright sign equals 1-8 over the crown. The crown has emanations too, it means it has energy. This is not a math equation. When you live on the street and you have hobo code and these things that are written in chalk, that's not 18, it's I eight. And there's a lot of references to eating these things, free steak, mouths, whatever, because what's your primary function if you live on the street? To survive. Food. Yeah. I mean, you can go without water for, you know, whatever, but yeah. But um, these are spontaneous pieces of pain. And um, it's funny, he turns the Basquiat crown upside down into bat's wings. And a bat is reoccurring motif 
in, in this exhibition. Um, it shows up at least seven or eight times in this, but this is a once in a lifetime. We have a painting over here. It's got Queen's lyrics in it from um, We Are the Champions. And he marked part of it out. And here again, you're going to see a lot of these faces that are reminiscent of African masks, where this one doesn't have it, but you have a round eye and a squinty eye. It's about looking out and looking in. What was always there is a king's crown. And the last piece, can we show the sure. big piece over here? And I think you can get a real sense of the artist in this one. Well, so first of all, all these paintings are masterpieces. They've never been seen before, ever. It's worth over $200 million. This one is the star of the show. Uh, and it's about as rich and deep as you can get with Bosco's paint. First of all, you see where he's written all these A's. Some people you say, well, that's a tribute to Hank Aaron. No, it's screaming. It's about pain. Mm. And they're see, all capitalized. That's right. You see these little, these little black birds caught in this jail, this cage in hell and red while well, the white birds fly free? That's right. He says, Samo's here. In fact, the poem that was written by the man who bought these paintings, or written by Basquiat and the man, talks about, there's, there's in the poem, there's, there's inscriptions. Industry Insider. Um, again, the crown says money sucks. Dollar sign, S-U-C-K-S. Again here, the hobo code there, and the one on the, sh on the skull man's chest, or sorry, skeleton man's chest. That's a symbol for jail. Because for a black man in a white man's world in 1980s and today, life is like jail. Mm. It's terrible. You're not free. Unfortunately not. You're not free. But again, I talked about the fact about eating. It says up here, steak is free, steak is free, Friday, Friday steak is free because that's what they said. Well, when you say they, that means somebody else has got the power. Mm. And unfortunately, not that much has changed, but we can learn from these paintings because they're hitting, right. hitting us in the face with this power. I mean, we got one over here that I find particularly interesting because it definitely references African mask. And I said before, you got the round eye and you got the squinty eye. It's about looking out and looking in. You got a crown of thorns or a halo or a halo with emanations. It all means all the same. But guess what? This is a ladder. What's the symbol for a ladder? It's how you get out. It's how you ascend. And this figure has a neck and shoulders for which you don't find on these, these skulls and these head. And, and this here, these gold things, I interpret them to be epaulets. Now, if you're in the military, you know, what is an epaulet? Well, it's a symbol of rank and power because Basquiat was taking it back. Mm -hmm. And in this whole exhibition is him saying, I'm the king, you know, and I'm not gonna let this happen. But in the end, he succumbed to the- Life got the better of him. And uh, right. it's, it's a tragedy. And where were his family? Well, he had two sisters, uh, his father. His father put his mother in a mental institution. And actually, there's a painting on the other side that says, no, no, sorry, a sick mama. Mm. And in an interview late in life, late in life for him was 26. They said, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? He goes, uh, I'd go talk to my mom. Was she still living at the time of his passing? Yes, mm. but she was in a mental institution. And so his father and sisters started the uh, Basquiat Estate Attribution Committee. And these paintings were found after that committee was disbanded in, in two, early 2012. But we have a monitor in our gallery and the guy Diego Cortez, who discovered Basquiat in 1981 in the New York New Wave show, and he was head of the Basquiat Attribution Committee actually came and saw these paintings in storage in New York City and he said they were masterpieces and he said and actually in 2017 uh, this guy Diego Cortez uh, put together 
that New York New Wave exhibition on Boscat only in London at the Barbican Gallery and Madonna came to see this and stood in front of a picture where he X'd out Madonna's name because mm. he was dating Madonna. Yeah. In Los Angeles, when he made these pictures, she, she wasn't Madonna yet. They were kids. They were 21, 21 years old. But her first single came out in October of 1982. But uh, she said that uh, she loved him. He was special. She'd wake up, and at 4 in the morning, he'd be mesmerized, painting in front of a canvas. Mm. But he did heroin, and she couldn't, she couldn't yeah, the take drugs. that. Yeah. So there's a lot of references to heroin in these paintings. Um, do you think if he would have got the mental help, it sounds like there was maybe some mental issues. I, I imagine so. Yeah. Uh, genetically and as well. ju he, That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, he lived in a box on the street, you know, and there are people that say, no, 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 he was a perfect middle class background. They, his friends said he had the parents had the best brownstone ever. Well, part of that's true and part of it's not. Mm. Dropped out of school, you know, he just said... He lived on the street. He was making postcards and painting on t-shirts. He met Andy Warhol. And uh, remember what the New York scene was like in the, in the early 80s, you know, at the Mud Club. And we're not talking Studio 54. I mean, we're talking about Dancer, Danceria. And uh, all these artists and people, they were just kids. They all became famous now. He just didn't live long enough. So, you know, he's, um, you know, when you got Jay-Z, currently quoting you because he's from brooklyn too saying i'm the new jean michel that's no joke the culture the culture and the culture and jean michel basquiat is part of that culture and the mediums he used on all of these paintings that you have the collection is what it's paint it's oil stick it's magic marker it's crayon it's chalk I mean, if you look at if you look at some and of these, it's all on cardboard. It's all on cardboard because he was painting on canvas for a dealer that they had a show in the early 1983, and those paintings on canvas are the ones that have sold for a hundred over a hundred million dollars, all from this year. This is his best year. So, if you want to be proud of your community, come to Orlando Museum of Art and see Jean Michel Basquiat. Definitely, definitely at the forefront, um, Aaron. Thank you so much for the details about um, Mr. Basquiat, what he meant for the culture, what he meant for African-American culture, Caribbean culture. He was Haitian, um, as well as Puerto Rican as well, the Caribbean culture. But what he means for hip hop culture today and how we can heed those warnings of art and history, how they're combined, but what it could tell us about the past and how it can lead us into a better future. So thank you so much. You. Amazing collection. This Black History Month, you have a year to see it. Please come out to the Orlando Museum of Art. Thank you again for hosting us, and we'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.